What's good, Easy Fam? It's your boy Easy Dubs TV, and I'm back at it with another banging man. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button as we are on the road to 13k subs, and I can't do it without you, gang. And make sure you turn on post notifications so that way you don't miss out on any other daily content posted here on the channel. And make sure to hit that like button. Let's try to get the video up to 10 likes. I'm gonna leave that up to y'all because I don't want to hold y'all up too long. So let's go ahead and dive into it. You're wondering, Dubs, how do you shoot the way you shoot? Rather, you are a person who just got the game on Black Friday, a person who got the game on Christmas, or you say, hey man, it's time to change up the jump shot and yours look chicken. I got y'all. I'm gonna show you guys the jump shot and I'm gonna show you guys all my animations that I currently use as the season three, plus the badges. So like I said, make sure to hit that like button because this is the total package. But let's go ahead and get into it, man. So for my animations right now, obviously you don't care about the layup and dunk. We're not here for that. Free throw, I use 55. Now you only need a 60 free throw if anybody is curious on what you need to shoot consistently in the red. Maybe you can go lower. I've always bumped mine up to like a 60 and I shoot greens every single time. Free throw 55 is an easy one to time. But then again, free throws, just like everything else in the game, is really based off of preferences. Dribble pull up, we got Kevin Durant. Spin jumper, we got pro. Hop jumper, now this is a new hop jumper. It's Devin Booker. I love this one, honestly. For a while, I was using uh, Jason Tatum, but I don't know. Devin Booker's just clean. And then you just gotta release square or release X once you see that flick. Or once you see his arms are kind of like in that shooting motion when the elbows are pointed down. And I've been shooting greens consistently every time. Make sure you go to the Gatorade facility first and try that Devin Booker hop jumper. But post fade, I got Kobe Bryant. Post hook is normal. Post off shots, Harrison Barnes. For the actual jump shot itself, you guys are gonna wanna make sure that you have an 80 or three ball or higher. Um, I know a lot of people make stretch bigs and a lot of people actually have it above that for that Hall of Fame Claymore at 86. So you shouldn't have too much of an issue. Um, if you are a build that has a way lower three ball, I mean, you're gonna have to figure out what works for you. Um, one jump shot that I've been experimenting with when I was just playing around like with a big was this JT Thor one. Now with the JT Thor one, it's 19% Kyle Korver. 81% uh, Oscar Robinson for the releases and then the release speed is maxed out This is a pretty solid shot and as you can see in the bottom right corner You have to have a 76 three ball or above So if you're a build out there with a lower three ball, I got you covered here, too, man Make sure to go ahead and try this jump shot out and let me know else who has above that 84 three ball This is the main jump shot that I use on all my builds personally and it's right here Lamella ball for the base, Oscar Robinson for release one, and Dominique Wilkins for release two. Release speed maxed out, animation blending is 66%, Oscar Robinson, and 34% Dominique Wilkins. As you can see, we got all A pluses on the things that matter. Timing impact is only gonna pretty much say like how big your green window is, but honestly, that C minus doesn't make a difference. It's still a good shot regardless. So Lamella ball for the base, Oscar Robinson for release one, Dominique Wilkins for release two, release speed on max, animation blending, 66% Oscar Robertson and 34% Dominique Wilkins. Now, me personally, I don't really mess with any of this stuff right here. As you can see, mine is still on default as of like the red little circle. Um, I don't use any green animation. Trust me, go no green animation when you shoot. You don't want any distractions. You don't want any type of delays or any type of latency from having a green animation on. Other people may say it's completely placebo effect that, you know, having no green animation will help you green more. But me personally, I truly do believe that having no green animation is just more clean. You can focus on the actual shot itself and focus on the timings versus waiting to see if a delayed green animation pops up and it plays tricks with your brain. So just go ahead, trust me on this one. Try out the non-green animations, okay? And then for the curve, I use the curve bar. This is, for me, it's gonna be specifically for the dunk meter, and this is the one that I like to use the most. And please don't rock any trails. You don't need to see no trail every time you shoot the ball. It, it, it's, I don't know, for my eyeballs, it's super unpleasing. I'll just put it like that. For my settings, personally, shot meter's turned off. Get used to shooting without the meter. The moment you learn how to shoot without the meter, you're actually gonna receive a boost to your jump shot. 
Luba, aka Mike Wing, has already confirmed this in past 2Ks, and even this year he confirmed that you still receive a boost for shooting with your meter off. Learn how to shoot with your meter off. Do not just go into park, do not just go into stage, rec, pro-am with your meter off and not know your shot. Go to the Gary facility, play your favorite song, chill, and just practice your jump shot. Practice, 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 practice. Practice it without a green effect and practice it without a meter. You can thank me later, okay? Now, for my shot release timing, this is all gonna be preference based because it does not change the actual green window itself. It just changes the preference on when you want to release it. So for me, I like to put it on early. I've experimented with late. Eh, when I say experiment with late, we all know that the sayings glitch was a thing for the longest. And so I'll flip it to late and I can still shoot with it on late, but I would not go very late and I would not go very early unless you are really comfortable with releasing it like that. But given the animations and how the way I blended them, early is going to suit this jump shot the best. So make sure to try it out on early. And then this stuff really don't matter. Um, for anybody who's curious, I do play with who the guard turned off and my defensive assist strength on the 25. Other than that, you're not gonna really wanna change too much in the settings. Now for the badges. I do have my limitless range cord to gold now for everybody that does not know. And so I get a grand total of 23 shooting badges, but with limitless range cord to gold, I can go ahead and flip that and put it in the dead eye. Now, if you hit level 40 this season, which we plan on doing, I wanna make sure that you're gonna put on, like you could put on double shooting. I personally wouldn't. I think that really you don't even need dead eye. I've been experimenting with dead eye and blinders as of late since I finally cored limitless range to gold. But some of the key shooting badges that I would say are a necessity to my success shooting. Bronze amped is really all you need. That's just in case you get tired. Um, and I'm I'm a secondary ball handler. Sometimes when I play rec with randoms, I end up being the primary ball handler. So amped helps out because I'm obviously dribbling, trying to create, and sometimes I gotta take a shot when I'm tired. Claymore and gold or silver is really, I think that there's no difference between the two. So you could rock silver, you could rock gold. I don't think it's necessary to have it on Hall of Fame because people have to understand with Claymore, even the littlest bit of a flinch on your stick and that Claymore boost is gone. You have to be completely stationary. So you don't really need it on no Hall of Fame unless you really want to. But uh, yeah, I would say silver or gold is just fine. Bronze clutch shooter always comes in clutch, obviously. <laughs> no pun intended. Whether you're in the park or you're in the wreck. It never hurts to have on at least one badge on clutch shooter. You don't need it on a super high tier and it gives you a tremendous boost in those four quarter moments. Or if you're in park, when you're up past, I believe it is 15 points or 13 points, that boost starts to kick in. So at least put clutch shooter on bronze. Volume shooter, um, now I did see 2K Lab dropped a video on it. I haven't checked it out yet, but from what my testing has done, I see that volume shooter helps a lot, whether it's on gold or on hall of fame, because it gives you a boost regardless on if you make or miss so you can't go wrong with that like i said make or miss so go ahead and throw on volume shoot to whatever tier you would like it to be at i would say the sweet spot for me has been silver or gold but if you only have one badge throwing on bronze because like i said any boost is gonna help agent threes i can get mine on gold but i've been rocking it on silver i think silver is really that sweet spot everybody in the community has known silver agent threes to be a sweet spot and you only need an 83 three ball to get it on silver i believe is it 83 or is it 82 yeah 83 machine does help i've been experimenting with that on hall of fame and gold and bronze and silver for the most part this year i've been using it on bronze but i feel like silver is good gold is pretty good and all of, i mean like you just can't go wrong with green machine since everything is either green or brick anyways this year except for some of the slightlies that i've seen and i'm waiting for 2k to address that but uh because i've seen some people make some slightly contested shots in my face 34 percent slightly early we're not gonna go off into that rant right now y'all here for the badges so green machine you can use it on any tier and you're gonna see a good return on your investment with that i don't use guard up I don't use corner specialists. I mean, guard up. Unless you are a random on my team who doesn't hold defense with their hands up, guard up is practically useless. And then, like I said, I've been experimenting with blinders and dead eye thanks to um, you know you guys telling me, Dubs, you should try blinders. You should try dead eye. Quite honestly, you don't need either. The most contested shots I've made this year have all been without guard up, dead eye, or blinders. 
the times that I made M1 three point shots have been without dead eye, blinders, or guard up. So you don't really need it. I've been just experimenting with it to see if I can get a nice return on it. Blinders does trigger, but it doesn't trigger enough for me to put it like seven badge points into it. Dead eye mostly triggers for me, just given the fact of I'm a shooter. As you guys can see in those clips, people do come out and contest me. And most of the time after a while, people get desperate and they just jump at me. So if I got to take a shot where I think I have the timing right, but that person jumps split second, dead eye does trigger and it helps reduce that contest that they got. And then of course, limitless range, you can't go wrong with it. This is like I said, my day one build. So I don't have just an 85 three ball to just only rock silver. Haven't really experimented with silver. I know bronze is pretty much close to useless, but gold is really, really, really nice. As you guys could see in the clips from me shooting from deep. So those are gonna be my badges, the best settings, the best jump shot, my animations, all that tied into one. And then for the cherry on top, I like to stay with either limitless or spot precision because I like pulling it from deep, man. I really do. Spot precision helps. I mean, it just keeps you more consistent throughout the game. And then that limitless range, you can throw on that. Normally what I do is I rock this as a primary and then this as a secondary. So that way in a game, in a real game situation, since I play a lot of rec, I can extend the floor even more. I can stop in a place where my defenders like, ain't no way he's gonna pull it from that deep. And we shoot them things, lights out like we step. And then that spot precision kicks in because now once you get that team takeover or you get dual take, most of the time I get mine with team takeover until I lock my accelerator perk, which 2K, wink, wink. I finished my micro request. Can I get accelerator now, please? But uh, once I get that, I'll be able to even trigger these even faster. So this is just, you know, a shooter's best friend. Limitless and spot precision, you just can't go wrong. But hey, if you guys enjoyed that video and you found it informative, make sure to hit the like button. Every like will tell YouTube to share the video out to more people. And that's what we want to do. We're trying to grow in the fam. And if you want to catch any of the daily live streams, as you can see down below in that left corner, you will see the Twitch icon. Make sure to go to Twitch, type in Easy Dubs TV and drop a follow. We go crazy over there. We got song requests. We we'll react to NBA games. We can just do more as a community over on Twitch. And so that's where I'm going to be growing. So if you want to check me out on a daily and join the crew and join the fam, make sure to swing by over to Twitch. We'd love to see you there, man. But hey, until later on today, where you can catch me in the live stream. It's me, your boy, Easy Dubs TV, and I'm signing off, y'all. Y'all be easy, man. And uh, happy holidays. Peace.